Harley Davidson must be one of the world's most iconic global brands. But is it a great American export or is it a great Scottish export? If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Oi, you up doctor, get off my back. Maggie, come. Now bikers are passionate about their bikes. And few can be more passionate than those who own a Harley Davidson. They tell me that they sell over a quarter of a million new motorbikes every year. In 1904, when Charles Lang, a toolmaker in Chicago, bought a motorbike for himself, agreed to be the first Harley-Davidson dealer and sold one of the first production bikes ever made, he probably couldn't have imagined selling a quarter of a million of them in a year. But from there, this global brand has grown. I suppose you could say that was the birth of Harley-Davidson. But if you want the real roots of Harley-Davidson, you have to go back even further than that and cross an ocean to Angus in Scotland. You see, everything American came from somewhere. And just two miles along the road from the famous Pictish standing stones at Aberlemno is another monument. This cottage in Netherton Angus is a living memorial to the roots of Harley-Davidson. You see, in 1852, this two-bedroomed cottage was the home of Alexander Davidson. His pals would have called him Sandy. He didn't own the house. It was a tied house as part of his work as a craftsman in the smithy next door that's no longer standing. The land hereabouts belonged to Lord Minto. Now, a huge part of day-to-day -day life would have been controlled by the landowner. The house was tied to Sandy Davidson's work in the estate, and much of that work would have come from the estate in Lord Minto. Day-to-day -day activities of the family would be a familiar fetching and carrying, graft and grind that were a cycle of Victorian rural life. But why would a 52-year-old man decide to uproot his family from here and take the risk of starting all over again across an ocean? In other videos, I've talked about forced clearance, but surely the Davidsons weren't in that stark position. Have you ever watched that TV programme, Wanted Down Under, where folks decide whether to emigrate to Australia or to New Zealand? The most poignant bit of that is always the part where they have to watch messages from their family that they leave behind. Why take a journey like that in the mid-19th century, where the chances of return were even slimmer still. When the journey itself was fraught with dangers, and statistics told you that some of your children might not survive to the other side. I should say that I'll be making my own journey down under in 2023. Scotland History Tours will be playing away from home in Australia and New Zealand in 2023. If you live down under, then I'll be bringing my show Stories of Scotland to Fringe Festivals in Perth, Western Australia, Adelaide, Dunedin, hopefully Melbourne. And if you want me to come to your town, let me know in the comments section below. Every one of the people who took that daunting journey must have had some impetus or attraction, some push or pull. A vision of the future that gave powerful sense of fear or yearning. Just like the people crossing the Rio Grande or the English Channel in small boats today. Maybe for the Davidsons, that story's written on two pieces of paper. The 1851 census that tells us there were a total of 10 people living in this cottage. Sandy, his wife Margaret and their six bairns shared these two bedrooms with two other adult workers from the smithy and some of the children were creeping towards adulthood themselves. What would the future be for them? The other piece of paper was a letter from Margaret's mother. She had emigrated with two children to Milwaukee in 1843. 
Her husband now dead, she wrote back here to Angus saying that if a man can do an honest day's work, then America is the place to be. So Sandy and Margaret left this cottage and made that journey across the ocean. But they couldn't avoid the constricting grasp of those inescapable statistics. Soon after their arrival, young Alexander died of ship's fever. Having settled in Milwaukee, it was one of the other boys, William C. Davidson, who went on to have five children, three of whom co-founded Arlie Davidson. One of William C. Davidson's sons, Sandy's grandson, was Arthur Davidson. As a youngster, he became firm friends with another lad called Bill Harley. And they were keen fishers and they were always running around on their bikes heading out to favourite fishing spots. More than that, they were always tinkering with bikes. As they grew up, Arthur Davidson took his technical and craft skills to work for the railroad company and Bill Harley went to work for a push bike manufacturer. Looking for an easier way to get them down Milwaukee hills when they were gadding about, the idea of fitting an internal combustion engine to a bike seemed like an obvious solution. It was the kind of thing that people were doing and experimenting with in that Victorian age. In 1901, William Harley made plans for a 116cc engine that they could attach to a push bike. And he and Arthur worked on the bike with the help of Arthur's brother, Walter Davidson. Now, when they tested it, they still needed pedal power to get up the hills. So they started on a new bike powered by an improved 400cc engine. And they completed this challenge with the help of some others around Milwaukee, not least the eldest Davidson brother, William Jr., who was tool room foreman in the West Milwaukee Rail Workshops. So it was that in a shed in the Davidson's back garden, they built another motorbike, and that came in fourth in a Milwaukee motorcycle race. The rest, as they say, is history. The house that they left here in Angus is living history that you can visit for yourself. The restorations here were kick-started by Mike Sinclair, Maggie Sherratt and Keith McIntosh. And a group of bikers have formed the Davidson Legacy Preservation Group who need your support in order to continue their work saving this cottage. Find out all about it at thedavidsonlegacy.com or on Facebook, if you're that way inclined, Davidson Legacy Preservation. Many thousands of people left cottages like this in Scotland over the years and travelled all over the world. You may be one of their many descendants watching this channel. Each is a unique story. Not all survived. When folk left these shores, there's no telling who would be winners and who would be losers. There's no doubt that the Davidsons made their mark in the world. But this is where it all started. There's another story about a great transatlantic Scottish inventor coming up on screen now. If you've enjoyed this one, then please support the channel by clicking the link top right to become a Patreon member or buy us a coffee by using the link in the description below. In the meantime, Hamian Doch is going to be a lama alive. Cheerio and Rasta.